hello so today we're going to start our collage of freight train and the first thing we're going to work on is the background of freight train so you've got to think about where you want your freight train to go where do you want it to go do you want it to go past the city through a tunnel over the trestles do you want it to be during daytime or nighttime what do you want it to be and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to use a big large chisel tip marker to draw your train tracks. So if you look at the chisel tip, you can see that it's at an angle. And that's because you can use the angled part to make a thick line or you can turn it and use the tip to make a skinny line. And what I want you to do first is draw your train track. A straight black line going from one side to the other. If you're doing your train going over the trestles, you're going to draw the line in the middle of your paper. But if you're doing anything else, if you're not doing the trestles, you're doing anything else, your line is going to go near the bottom. So I want you to practice and try using the chisel tip, the wide part of the marker, to make a wide line. And you don't want to go real fast across your paper because then the marker will look kind of gray color. Uh, so you want to go slow and pull it all the way across and try to make it as straight as possible for your train. So that would be anything like the city or daytime or nighttime. I'm going to do trestles to show you what that would look like. So if you want your train to be going over the trestles, you're going to start in the middle of the paper. And again, you want to be you want it to be straight. You don't want this line to be higher than the middle or your train will stick up off the top of your paper. So you're just going to go slow and use the marker that way. So now that you have your train track drawn, you're going to decide where it's going. So if you want your train to go through a tunnel, you're going to use a black crayon and you're going to draw a curved line on one side of your paper and then color in this space with a black crayon and you want to color neatly. You want to color side to side and fill in. You don't want to be coloring all directions like this because then it looks scribbly. So you want to color in the same direction so you get a nice solid color. Then there was grass over the tunnel so then you can use some green to add some grass. Now I want this to be daytime so I'm going to take a white crayon and I'm going to draw some clouds in the sky. Now you might not be able to see this on the screen and that's okay. And since it's daytime I'm going to add a sun and I'm trying to press hard with the crayon and color neatly. And then I'm going to add a little bit of grass underneath the train track. And that's what you, do, you would do for your train going into the tunnel. Okay, so if you're going to do your train going by the city, you'll use um, a crayon to draw some buildings. So maybe I draw a couple of buildings with black crayon colored in lightly so I pressed hard when I drew the lines but now I'm not pressing hard I'm pressing lightly to fill in the building Okay, and then I need to decide if it's daytime or nighttime. I'm going to make it nighttime, so I'm going to add a moon. I'm going to add a few stars. Okay, for this one, I'm going to make it daytime. So I'm going to draw a sun. And some clouds. And then if I want my train to go over the trestles, I'm going to add a grassy hill 
for the train track to be sitting on. Right, and then for the trestles, I'm going to use a brown crayon, and I'm going to start with some vertical posts that hold the train track up. And I'm pressing hard. Okay, and then I'm going to do some lines going across, maybe just one or two going across. Each of these spaces I'm going to put an X, the letter X, so that they're all connected and it just makes the trestles look stronger. There's my trestles and then I'm going to have it be daytime so I need a sun. Okay, so I want you to notice how in each of my drawings that I did, the trestles, the daytime scene, the tunnel scene, the city, how I did not color in the sky because we're going to paint the sky in with watercolor and it'll be a lot faster and it'll look a, not, a lot neater. So I'm going to clean up my crayons and get out my watercolor paints. ready to paint your sky you're either going to get a black watercolor because it's nighttime or you're going to get a blue watercolor because it's daytime since this is daytime we know it's daytime because i did a sun i'm going to put a puddle of water take my paintbrush get it wet pull it across the edge of the oval paint wiggle the water around gently just wiggling it around the bristles are touching the paint under the water i'm not taking my paintbrush and jabbing it down in there where the metal part is touching the paint I'm just using the bristles and I'm going to paint my paper with the water. And I'm going to paint almost all of it. I won't paint the green hill, but I'm going to paint the rest of it. And you can see, since I used white crayon for my clouds, they show up. It's called a crayon watercolor resist. So the crayon pushes the watercolor off the top of it so that you can still see it. So the sky goes all the way to the bottom of this paper between and beyond the trestles. And I'm just going to paint right over the sun and the clouds. And they can still be seen. That's the great thing about crayon and watercolor. The table. Now our paper is a little bit longer than the placemat so we kind of have to scooch it. And so there is my sky and trestles all painted. Like the city, I'm going to get a black oval instead of a blue. And I'm going to put a puddle of water on top of the black. Wiggle the water around, touching the paint underneath. And paint in the sky. This time I won't paint over the buildings. I'll just paint in the sky. And notice how the yellow stars are still showing up in the nighttime sky because they're crayon and it's a crayon watercolor resist. So I'm going to paint right over the top of the stars and around my moon. I could paint over my moon, but I'm just going to paint around it. This black is pretty dark. guys all painted in and then notice how my whole paper has color now the crayon and the paint together fill the paper so now this is a daytime scene as well because the sun so I would use a blue watercolor get a puddle of water on top of it wiggle it around whole paper is painted so that one would be finished. And then the last one that I have is just a plain daytime scene. So again, just blue, blue watercolor.
daytime scene would look like. So when you're finished painting, you'll take your painting over to the drying rack and I'll help you put it on there. Then you will get, you will take your oval paints and put them back in the tray. And I'll get the water basins and the paints, but you will get a paper towel and you will wipe off your blue placemat to get all the wet off of it. So you get a paper towel, it's nice and dry, and you just rub and dry off your placemat to get all the paint. Now it's not, it doesn't have to be clean, this, this placemat is not clean, but it needs to be dry. So I'm just drying it off. My paper towel will go in the trash can because you can't recycle paper towels, and we will put our blue placemat back in the cabinet. Good job, kindergarten. to create your train right on top of your drawing. So we're going to start with the engine. You're going to get a black piece of paper and an engine shape. You're going to lay the engine shape down near the middle of your paper. If you want to save yourself some time, you could scoot the engine shape to the bottom of your paper, line up the bottom of the engine with the bottom of your paper, and that would save um, on some cutting. And then you're going to take your pencil and trace around it. And pencil does show up on this black paper. So you're going to remove the shape. And then you can see the engine on my black paper, the pencil line. And you're going to cut that out very carefully. Follow right on the pencil lines. These can be set aside and here's your engine and you're going to decide where you want to glue it if you want to glue it on the right side of your paper and your train going this way or if you want to glue it flip it over and glue it going this way on your paper on the left side and your trains going to, to the left you're going to glue your train floating above your track you're going to leave a little bit of space between the bottom of your engine and your track because we're going to add wheels later when the glue is dry. So you're going to flip this over, put a frame of glue on the back, and glue this down close to the edge of the paper, the right edge of your paper, or the left edge of your paper. Real close because you have to have enough room for all of the rest of your train. Your train is really long. So you're going to glue it above the train track, a little bit above the train track, really close to the edge. Don't glue it over here and leave all this space. Scoot it over and glue Okay, so now we're ready to do the purple box car. So you're going to get a purple rectangle and you don't have to do anything to it. You're just going to put a frame of glue and you're going to glue this right behind the engine. But this time the purple box car doesn't have any wheels. So you're going to glue it just a little bit above the train track so that we can add wheels later. Okay, so you're going to glue that just a little bit above, floating above. Now we're going to have the blue coal car. So you're going to get another blue rectangle, but this time it's shorter. So you're going to cut the top of that off and you re recycle that. And then this skinnier rectangle is going to get glued right behind the purple. You want to put it close to the purple, not really far away from the purple, or you're not going to leave yourself oh, enough you're space. Okay. You're going to leave um, a little bit of space between the bottom of the blue car and the train push that down. Okay. Then the next one is a green uh, cattle car. That's just leaving the rectangle as is, putting a frame of glue on it, glue it real close to the blue coal car, and leave a little bit of space below it for the wheels. Then you're going to do the yellow hopper car. So you're going to get a yellow rectangle and you're going to get a hopper pattern. So put that Take the hopper pattern, the straight edge, top edge of the hopper pattern, line it up with the top edge of your yellow paper, and then just trace the zigzag part at the bottom with your pencil. Then you're going to cut on those pencil lines with your scissors. Zigzag. This little bit can be recycled. This part where the pencil lines are, I'm going to put my glue here. Frame of glue. This gets glued right behind the green cattle car. 
a leave a little bit of space between the bottom of it so that you can add your wheels. The next one is the orange tank car. So you'll get an orange piece of paper and you'll get a tank shape. You're going to line up the bottom of the tank shape with the bottom of your orange paper and trace around the top and sides with your pencil and then you're going to cut on that pencil line. Frame of glue. This gets glued right behind the, red, the yellow hopper car. Leave a little bit of space for the wheels. And the last is the red caboose. So you're going to get a red paper. You're going to get a caboose shape. Line up the bottom of the caboose shape with the bottom of your red paper. Trace around the top and the bottom sides. You're going to cut on those pencil lines. When you're tracing this shape, when you cut it out, it should be the same, same shape. So the hopper car, this was the shape of the pattern. When I cut it out, that was the shape of that shape, of that yellow paper. The tank car, this is the shape. That's what I get for that. For the tank car, it looks just like what the shape is that we're tracing around after we cut it out of the colored paper. And then, frame of glue. Line it up behind the orange tank car. Leave a little bit of space at the bottom for your wheels. So now we have our train cut out and glued, but now we have to add those details, the wheels and the details to the cars to make it look like a real freight train in this, from the story. And so our artwork is telling a story. Okay, so now we're going to add the wheels and the details to all of our cars on our train. So we're going to start with the engine. And you're going to use a black permanent marker. And on the back of your engine, you're going to draw a circle that touches the bottom of the engine and the black line, the rail. And you're going to do two in the back, two circles next to each other, and two in the front. And then you're now we're going to move to the purple box car. Purple box cars the same. Two wheels on the back, two wheels on the front. So circles they can overlap into the purple box car, or they can be just under the box car. Making sure those wheels are touching the track, the black line. Color them in. Make sure you're using a juicy marker that works. If your marker looks kind of grayish or it seems like it's dying, trade it out for a different one. And now on the purple box car, we're going to draw two vertical lines, two lines that go up and down. And then we're going to fill the center space with horizontal lines that go side to side. And there you have your purple box car. So now we're going to move to the blue coal car. Two wheels in the front, two wheels in the back. You're going to decorate the blue box car. This time you're going to put horizontal lines like you did in the middle of the purple box car on the back and the front. It's like a ladder. And then you're going to fill the top of your blue coal car with coal. So you'll draw a kind of jagged wavy line and then you'll color this in all in black. Okay so we're going to move on to the green cattle car. Two wheels in the front, two wheels in the back, two vertical lines, so two lines that go up and down. On either side, the front and the back, you're going to draw some horizontal lines again. Lines that go side to side. And then in the center, you're going to draw a big X. So you're going to start at the top and go down to the bottom. Start at the top and go down to the bottom for a big X. So now we're going to move on to our yellow hopper car. 
So we're going to do two wheels in the back, two wheels in the front, but they are going to be on either side of the points here at the bottom. So you'll draw a wheel on one side of the point, a wheel on the other side, touching the train track. Horizontal lines in the front and the back. And this is a hopper car that carries coal as well. So you'll do your wavy line at the top and color it in black. Orange tank car, two wheels in the front, two wheels in the back. Curved lines that match the curve of the orange tank car. So the line or the edge of the orange tank car curves to the left. So we're gonna draw two more lines that curve to the left. The back of the orange tank car curves to the right, so we'll draw two curved lines curving to the right. And then two lines up at the top, two horizontal lines up at the top. And finally, we've gotten to our red caboose. Two wheels in the front, two wheels in the back. You're going to start with a circle window in the center, two square windows on either side of the circle window, and then a rectangle up top for another window. And there you have your finished freight train collage. Good job, kindergarten.